Hello, my name is Shauna Sue from Crooked Door Studio, and today we're going to paint a cute little giraffe painting. I have my inspiration picture right here on my phone. I'm going to go buy this, but this is a reminder that yours may not look like this when you're done. Mine may not look like this when I'm done, and that's okay. Whatever we do today is going to be uniquely you. So because this is a recording, you can access back that up at any point. You can pause this, you can rewind it if something didn't make sense, if you need to watch it a little closer. So just keep that in mind as you, as you work through this today, okay? So you may feel like I'm moving a little fast. That's okay. Get through one step and pause it, okay? And then hit play when you're ready again. So first thing I like to do is uh, make sure I have all my supplies and everything in order before I start painting so I don't have to run back and forth and find stuff in the middle. So the first thing, you wanna make sure you have either an apron on or an old paint shirt. The paint that we're using is acrylic paint. It's water-based, water-soluble, but if you get it on your clothes and it dries, it's a real bear to get out. So if you don't have a paint shirt, you might take your shirt that you have on and flip it inside out because it's always better to get mess on the inside rather than the outside of a nice shirt. Uh, for grown-ups that are watching this, Murphy's Oil Soap later. It's your friend to get paint out. Okay, so I have my apron, I have my paint shirt, I've checked my surroundings. I've made sure that I don't have anything around that I'm super concerned about getting paint on that I, I would be upset about later. So I've checked, everything's good. I'm in a studio, so I'm pretty safe. But if you're in a home, if you're at someone's house, take a look around, okay, be careful. So apron, paint shirt, I've checked my surroundings. I have my inspiration picture here. We'll talk about that in a minute. I have my canvas. I'm gonna keep my canvas vertical. I'm gonna keep it portrait because the painting that we're doing today is a giraffe painting and I wanna keep it vertical so I have room for a long skinny neck, okay? As we go, it's entirely up to you, but it looks nice if you decide to paint your edges. So what we're gonna do is paint that whole background lots of fun colors first, and I'll show you how to do that. And it's always nice if you wrap your paint on around and paint those edges, the top, the edges, the bottom as you go. You don't have to, but you wanna decide now, are you gonna paint them or not? Because what you don't wanna do is get halfway through a painting and have only half your edges done, right? That just looks sloppy. Okay, so we have our apron. We should have at least three brushes. You might have more right? But the three main brushes you're going to need, and everybody has different brushes in their kit, but the three that you're going to need, you're going to need your biggest brush. Everybody should have some kind of a big brush. You're going to need some kind of a medium brush, right? He's skinny this way, but he's flat this way, and some kind of a pointy brush. Those are the three we're going to need. So when I'm not using my brushes, another thing you should have is a water cup. I'm not sure if you can see it, it's down here, but I have a water cup filled halfway with cool or cold water, never warm or hot. It needs to be cool or cold. And the brushes that I've identified I'm gonna use, those three brushes, I'm gonna put them in the water cup, boop, leave them there. That's where they live while I'm painting, in my water cup, so they don't dry out. While, while we're in the process of painting. Something else you should have, a couple paper towels, something to dry your brushes off on, and then you should have paint. You should have a lot of little containers of paint. So I'm gonna have you take those little containers and open them up, pardon me, and on the paper plate in your kit, you don't have to dump all that paint out, but dump a little bit out around your paper plate. And your plate should look something like that. Try to keep your colors out at the edge so you can use the middle for mixing. Okay, this is a good place to pause because that's all the supplies we need. So pause, get all your stuff together, and then we'll get going again. Okay, so here we are going again. 
I have my inspiration picture here. Let's talk real quick about how this is going to work. We're going to paint that background lots of fun stuff. Then we're going to take a pause. Let that dry. Might be a good time to go get a snack, go to the bathroom, rinse your water out, and then we'll come back and put our giraffe on there. Okay? That's how this is gonna work. So let's get going, shall we? So I'm gonna have you, let me get my water cup here. I'm gonna have you in your water cup find your biggest brush, that biggest, fattest brush you put in your water cup. And since your brushes might be new, tap, tap, tap in the bottom of the water cup. Tap, tap, tap. Sometimes brushes come from the factory with starch in them that keeps them really stiff in shipping so they don't get damaged. You wanna clean that out of there. Tap, tap, tap. So that's my biggest brush. So I'm gonna take that brush and then I'm gonna dry it off on the paper towel. I'm gonna to push the water out of it. Push the water out. Set my cup down. Okay, so we're gonna paint background. So I'm gonna start with white and yellow and then I'm gonna move into some red. And yellow and red are gonna make like a pretty orangey color and then we'll get into some pink and some blue and we'll finish up down here at the bottom with some turquoisey green. Now, anytime you take color, we always go in the edge of the puddle, never the middle. You don't wanna mess that whole puddle of paint up, right? If I use out of this edge, then I can use out of this edge later and this edge and still have clean paint by going all the way around the puddle. So I'm gonna use white and yellow so edge, take, take a chunk of white. Look at me loading that brush up. Chunk of white and yellow. And I'm gonna start here at the top corner and I'm gonna work my way diagonal. So white and yellow. And now is the time to decide if you're gonna paint your edges. I think I'm gonna paint my edges because I think it looks nice if my painting is wrapped all the way around. So I'm gonna stretch my hand out, and that's the area I'm gonna cover with yellow. Okay, and my brush stroke is a nice, sweeping, flat X. Okay. Cover that whole top corner. Remember, if I'm going too fast, you pause. I want to move into my next color. To do that, I want to make sure that yellow is still wet so my next color blends. So I'm going to take some more white in the edge, the color I've been using, yellow, and my next color, a little bit of red. Just a little bit to start with. And to blend, I'm going to start in that yellow and then work my way down. Oh, that's a lot of red. But I'm going to blend it into that yellow that's wet. Oh, look at that. That's pretty. And you see, as I go up, I lose yellow. I, or I should say, I lose that bright red because it blends into that yellow. Isn't that fun? Okay. That's the only time I'm gonna add yellow on my brush because now that was just to blend. Moving into my new color now. So just red and white. That sweepy brush stroke, oh, edge, with that edge. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, those colors are gorgeous. Remember, they will only blend when your paint is wet. Once your paint is dry, it will not blend any longer, okay? Acrylic paint, when it dries, it kind of turns to plastic. So I wanna be about halfway down on this side because I'm going diagonal, about halfway and it should be pretty darn pink. So I might do, I might do one more little stripe there. 
but it should be pretty pink by the time I, I get down there. Oh, there we go. That's pink. Oh, edges. Don't forget, if you have decided to paint your edges, it's easier to do them now than it is to try to go back and match them up later. Okay. So now, once you've got your edges and you're halfway down on the left, you might wanna go ahead and hit pause. Make sure everybody gets to that spot we're gonna rinse our brush out. So hit pause, get everybody halfway down on the left, and then we'll pick back up. Okay, so you're back. Everybody's halfway down on the left. We're gonna move on. I'm gonna take this brush and rinse it out because I wanna move on to purple. I don't have purple on my plate, I'm gonna mix red and blue and clean white, and that's gonna give me purple. I need to rinse my brush out because I still have yellow from the beginning in my brush, and if I don't rinse that yellow out, purple and yellow, opposites on the color wheel, if I mix them together while they're wet, I'll get poop. I don't want poop. So I'm gonna reach for my water cup here. I'm gonna tap, tap, tap that brush in the bottom of the cup before I move on. Tap, 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 knock that paint out of there. This is not real aggressive, it's just very gentle, right? And then dry it off on paper towel. Should come out pretty clean. And now I'm gonna move on. So I'm going to take the color I had been using. That's how we get it to blend. Just a little bit though. So I had been using red. I'm gonna go over here in this edge of it so I don't get any that has any yellow in it maybe. So a little bit of clean red. A little bit of clean white. And my new color, a little bit of blue. start there in that edge. Oh, that's pretty. Now, if you're not getting a good blend, get your get your pink again, right? Start with that little bit of pink and add blue. But once I've taken that one swipe across there, not gonna grab pink anymore. I'm just gonna grab blue. That red was just, that pink was just to get a purpley blend color. So I'm moving on to blue and white. It's that same brush stroke, those big fat X's. Look, I'm using a lot of paint, a lot, a lot of paint. Don't be stingy with your paint. You can always pour out more. Okay, I think I'm gonna take that blue down here to almost the corner. So blue, clean white. Do you see how I'm using around the edge of that white? So I get clean every time. as I go, trying to remember. Okay. And then from blue, my last color, into green. So I'm gonna take a little blue, a little clean white, a little bit of green. That'll be, the, that'll be the last time I touch the blue. 
I just have to add a little bit to get it to blend. And you know what, if yours isn't blending the way you would like it to, I, I do have to say this is a, this is something that takes, it takes practice. It took me a long time to figure out how to blend. But once I figured it out, oh, I love blending. I would be happy just to leave this canvas the way it is with no, with nothing else on it. Once you figure it out, it's good stuff. Okay, not gonna touch the blue anymore because I wanna finish out with green. So green, clean white, and I'm gonna finish out. Getting my edges. Now, if you wanna paint the bottom edge of your canvas, I would probably wait until, wait until you're just about done because you don't wanna paint the bottom edge and then set it back down because that wet paint will stick to your easel and it'll make it look messy. It'll make your painting look messy. So I would probably wait until you're just about done, lay your canvas flat, and then take a little bit of that green and get that bottom edge. Make that the last thing you do. Okay, done. So check your edges, make sure you got everything. Um, don't worry about that bottom edge, you'll get that at the end. Pop your brush in your water cup, hit pause, it's time for a drying break. Okay, here we go, ready to move on. So my canvas is, is almost completely covered. The only thing I haven't painted yet is that bottom edge. I can do that at the end when I lay my, I can lay my canvas flat. Um, you may have gone and rinsed out your water to get clean water, clean your brushes out. We're gonna need some clean white for this next step. So if you have messed up your whole puddle of white, you might get your little container of white and pour out a little more in a clean spot. I've got enough clean white I think I can use right there in the middle. So let's put our giraffe on there, shall we? We're gonna do this in white to start with just white. So I have my biggest brush. I'm going to use plain white. And I'm going to figure out where I want the head to go. I want the head to be up here. And the head shape is kind of an upside down rounded triangle. The nose, the little snoot, is about right there in the middle of the canvas. I want to give myself enough room up here that I can put ears and it's, do giraffe have antlers or are they horns? So I can put his little, his little antler horns up there. I need to look that up, but I want room for those. Okay. So I'm going to start with my big brush, clean it out, dry it off, white paint, and leaving myself about at least four fingers, at least a hand width all the way around, and knowing that the snoot will be right here in the middle. So how about we start there? That's right about where that snoot's gonna be. I feel good about that. A little snoot. And what did we say? It's an upside down-ish triangle. And remember, everybody's gonna be a different shape. Hmm, I feel good with that. That's a good shape. And I'm gonna fill it in with just white. Okay, just filling it in. I wanna give a nice bright base for that color to live upon, for the yellow, for the yellow giraffe color to live upon. So I have to put a nice white base on there first. Okay, that's pretty good. How about neck? So I'm gonna do the neck here. It kind of start, swoops in and then comes back out. I want a long skinny, oh that's a little skinny, that's kind of silly. Widen that out a little bit. I'm gonna fill that in. that neck in. I wanted it tall and skinny and I, I made it a little too skinny, but that's okay. I can always fatten it up a little bit. 
Oh, I found a little, little wet green paint. Wipe that off. If you find some wet paint, don't panic. Let it dry. Clean your brush out. It'll be fine. There we go. Okay. Here's my giraffe head. <laughs> his head's a little, or his neck's a little crooked. I'm okay with that. It makes him look a little silly. Okay. And now I'm going to move to a smaller brush. This could be time to pause if you need to, to catch up, to get everybody to this spot. I'm going to pop this big brush in the water cup while we pause and get my medium brush. Okay. So now I have my, one of my smaller brushes. It's my medium brush, not the pointy one, but the one that's, um, he's skinny one way, but he's fat the other way. And still with white, I'm gonna paint ears on there now. So what do my ears look like? Giraffe ears are big, right? So I'm gonna start, my ears are gonna be in this corner. They're gonna kind of point up and away. So I'm gonna do the top of the ear first. I'm gonna do, a great big uh, frown, I almost said smile. A great big frown, Verp. almost like a rainbow. And then I'm gonna come down two-ish fingers, two finger widths, and I'm gonna do a smile and a frown. It's kind of like a backwards S. So watch what I'm gonna do, two fingers. I'm gonna do a smile. And a little frown at the end. Burp. Okay. Let me adjust my camera here. Sorry about that. There we go. And I'm going to fill that in. Okay. Let's do the other ear. Their ear. So here at the corner, it's a great big frown. And then it's two fingers, smile, and a frown out at the end. And let's fill that in. Okay. And next, again, pause here if you need to. Next, Antler horns. I probably should have looked that up before, before class, huh? Antler horns. They are about as wide as my thumb, maybe a little wider. Right here in between the, in between the ears. Not as tall as the ears. About like that. And then they have little nubbins on the end. Little poofy nubbins. And another one. <laughs> That's silly. There we go. Okay, so this is a good time to pause. We have all that white on there. We're going to let that dry. So pause. We'll come back and we'll start putting color on. Okay, here we go, we're back, we're ready to move on. It's time to get some color on our giraffe now. So I'm gonna use, I think I'm gonna start with yellow and then I can put the brown on top and then a little bit of pink. So with the yellow, I'm not gonna use just yellow, I'm gonna use yellow with some white. I think the yellow by itself is a little too much. So I'm gonna use yellow with a, about 50-50, about half yellow, half white. And I'm using my medium brush. So I'm gonna take that medium brush and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a big swipe of that yellow right along top of the ears. <laughs> Probably about as wide as my thumb. 
going right over top of that white. And do the same thing over here. Perfect. And then yellow and white. I want to paint the bottom part of those antler horns. We're going to call them dilly boppers, I think. The bottom part of those dilly boppers. And then that face. See how I'm painting that face? Like a rainbow. Up and around with yellow and white. I'm gonna have to get some clean white, I think. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see if I can manage with what I have. So do you see I don't have any big boogers of paint? I've smoothed those out not leaving any big globs. So I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow and white and here's the bottom of my snoot. I'm gonna draw with the yellow the top of my snoot. Cause there's no point in painting that yellow if I'm just gonna cover it with pink, right? Okay. So let's paint that head except the snoot. Again, back and forth like a rainbow, swooping back and forth. Oop, and smoothing out the boogers of paint. Okay, and then I'm gonna paint the neck. So right there under the snoot. And let's paint that neck in. Remember, I'm not just using yellow. I'm using yellow and white. I'm mixing them together here. That yellow by itself is too see-through. It's too transparent. I have to add a little bit of white to it. Uh-oh, I got some green in my, in the neck. Okay, what do we do when that happens? We wipe our brush off, rinse it out. I'm okay with that. Okay, this might be a pause time to let everybody get to this point. I'm gonna keep moving. So welcome back from the pause. I have my medium brush. I'm gonna clean it out. Tap, tap, tap it in the water cup. Drying it off on my paper towel. And now I'm gonna use, pardon me while I get some more white. I just don't have enough, I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. When I got clean white, you see I put it over here in a clean spot. I didn't put it back in the middle of that mess. I want some clean white. So I'm gonna take with my medium brush, some white and a little bit of red, just a little bit. I'm gonna get a real light pink. And the white part of the ears, let's fill that in. Nice, just like that. And the other one, just the white part of those ears. There we go. And with that same pink, let's fill in the snoot. That whole snoot. Okay. 
There we go. And then I'm gonna do one more thing with pink and then I'm gonna be done with it. That brush that I've been using, I'm gonna add a little more red to it. I'm gonna make it just a little bit darker. Not super dark, just a little bit darker. And I'm gonna put nostrils. And my nostrils, they're not just circles, they're sideways ovals. So I'm gonna do a sideways oval here and a sideways oval here. I might go a little dark. go. Oh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. He's already getting personality. Okay. So I'm going to take that brush. This, this might be a pause time. Get everybody to the same place. So let's go ahead and pause. We're going to come back and we're going to finish out with some brown and some eyes and sign it. I think that'll be it. So I'm going to take this brush and rinse it out. Okay, here we go. So now with brown, I have my medium brush with brown and I'm going to start by filling that, filling the top of that antler horn in, the dilly bopper. Choo, 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 choo. That little nubbin on top. Cute. With brown. Fill it in. Super cute. Okay, and now I'm gonna start putting patches. So let's see, what might my giraffe look like? I feel like he needs a patch right here. A little brown patch. Cute. I'm just using brown. He might have a little patch here in between the dilly boppers. He might have Another patch over here by this ear. And then I'm gonna move down to the neck. Let's see what this might look like. I think we'll have one here. And we have another one here. My yellow is still a little bit wet. I'm okay with that. It's kind of blending with that brown. Kind of like it. I think I need a couple more. Do you see how I'm leaving little bits of yellow, little yellow lines there? That one. Okay. Oh, you guys were close. I'm loving how this is turning out. And let's do one more right there. Okay, once I have my brown on there, my big brown blocks, you might pause. I'm done with this brush. I'm gonna move on to my pointy brush next. So this is a good time to pause. Okay, as we come back from our pause, I have my pointy brush. So I've cleaned it out. I've dried it off. I have it come into a really nice point. And I'm gonna do just a little bit of outlining. You don't have to do much here. 
but I'm going to take some brown and do you see how I'm dragging it through and twirling to get it to make it stay at a nice point. And I'm going to, I think, outline those ears. Oh, that's fun. This doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be precise. You don't even have to do this part if you don't want. But I kind of like what it does. Give little outlines to my dilly boppers. Little outline to the head. I think I'm gonna with brown, this is all with brown. I outline the top of that snoot. <laughs> oh, snoot. I'm going to, oh, I did that ear. I need to do that ear, huh? Just for good measure, I'm going to outline down here too. Okay. The last thing, well, not the very last thing, but one of the last things we need to do, we need to give him eyes. So I think I'm going to take this brush. I've got some brown in it, but I think I'm going to add just a little bit of black. So it's okay if there's brown in there. The black is more powerful, so the black will overtake the brown. And with my pointy brush, I'm going to put eyes that are lower than the ears, right? So my, the bottom of my ears are there, so they need to be lower than that. And they want to be kind of, my left eye is above my left nostril. So I'm going to do, and I like them set far apart. So there's one, and there's two. Oh, cute, cute, cute. And I'm going to wipe that brush off, rinse it out if you need to. I'm going to take a little bit of brown, and I'm going to give a little eyebrow little eyebrows. Zoop. Oh, oh, I love him. I absolutely love him. He's fun. I think I'm going to stop. I could continue to play. I could continue to do some little outlines on the nostrils. You can play all day with that, but for, for this time, I'm going to call it done. Now, don't forget, make sure your brushes all wind up in your water cup. We don't want any dry, crusty brushes laying around. If you seal your paint containers up, it'll stay fresh and you can use it for another, for another time, for another project. The paint that's on here, we just throw it away. That's why we don't put all of this on the plate because once it's out here exposed to the air, we're done with it. We're going to pitch it. So my plate, my paper towel, I'm gonna to get rid of all of those things. One of the last things you might do, lay your painting flat and paint that bottom edge green, okay? And then one of the very, very last things every artist needs to do is sign their painting. You can sign with your little brush or if you have a Sharpie, you can sign with that. Artists usually sign small down in one of the bottom corners. That's usually where we sign our work. You can sign on the back if you want to with a Sharpie or a pen, but don't sign on the canvas, sign on the wood. If you sign on the canvas, it could bleed through. Okay, so I do believe that's it for the day. Thank you so much for joining me today. This has been a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed yourself and I hope I see you at another class soon. Thanks, bye-bye.